the weight average molecular weight is another means of characterizing the molecular weight of a polymer sample. It's denoted by an uppercase M for the subscript W, and you'll sometimes see it with or without an overbar. In this calculation, larger chains are weighted relative to smaller ones. In this calculation, the larger chains make a larger contribution to the overall value. So as a result, the weight average molecular weight will always be greater than or equal to the number average molecular weight. It's determined experimentally commonly by gel permeation chromatography and light scattering experiments. Why is this important? Two samples theoretically could have the same number average molecular weight, but have, but they could have significantly different weight average molecular weights. And oftentimes, larger polymer chains will have a larger influence in the properties of a sample as a whole. So if we were to look at the bottom two distributions, where the x-axis is molecular weight and the y-axis is the mole fraction, or you could think of it as just relative abundance, the number average would be approximately right in the middle for both. However, the shape of these distributions is quite different. On the left, there isn't a significant amount of higher molecular weight material. Whereas on the right, there is a, a greater amount of higher molecular weight chains. So as a result, the distribution on the right would have a greater weighted average molecular weight as opposed to the one on the left. Mathematically, the weight average molecular weight of a polymer sample denoted two ways, either as the sum of the weight fraction of chains with a molecular weight mi times their respected molecular weight, or can also be denoted as the sum of the number of chains with a molecular weight mi times their molecular weight squared over the sum the number of chains with certain molecular weight times their respective molecular weight. Let's try using these equations in a practice problem. Now here in this table we're given a theoretical distribution of a polymer sample. So using both equations we'll determine what the weight average molecular weight is. So let's first use the first definition that we defined where is the weight average molecular weight is equal to the sum of the weight fraction times the respective molecular weight for certain chains. So first we would need to determine the total weight of the sample. So to do that we'll just sum up the contributions of each chain to the sample as a whole. Just to be clear, the table on the left, the left column is the number of chains and the right column is the molecular weight of those chains in kilograms per mole. If we were to sum this up, we get a total weight of 1,225. Next, to determine what the respective weight fraction of each respective chain length is, we need to divide the contribution of each chain length by 1,225. So for this one, it would be 200 divided by 225 is equal to 0 0.16333. This 25 times 15 is 375. And divided by that equal to 0 0.3061, 20 by 20 is 400, and this one is equal to 0 0.3265, 
And the last five times 50 is 250 divided by 1,025 equal to 0 0.2041. Now we have the weight fraction of each chain length. So now all we need to do is sum up the weight fraction of each chain length multiplied by its respective molecular weight. So our weight average molecular weight is going to be equal to 0 0.1633 times 10 plus 0 0.3061 times 15 plus 0.3265 times 20 plus 0 0.20 Four one times fifty, and if you do the math, it works out to be equivalent to approximately twenty three kilograms per mole. Now let's use our other definition. So in the other definition, our weight average molecular weight is equal to the sum of the number of each chain length multiplied by its respective molecular weight squared over the sum of the number of chains with a certain molecular weight times that molecular weight. So we've actually calculated the bottom half. Um, so this is, this right here is the total molecular weight of the sample. And that we calculated to be 1,225. So all we need to calculate now is the uh, top half. The sum of mi times mi squared is going to be first to be 20 times 10 squared plus 25 times 15 squared and so on and so on. It works out to be 2,000 plus 5,625 plus 8,000 plus 12,500, which is equal to 28,125. Now it's just a matter of division. It's will be. 28,125 over 1,225, and that's roughly equal to 23 kilograms per mole. It's the same as what we found using the first equation. Which equation you use will just depend on what information you're given in a problem. Oftentimes it's more convenient to use one over the other. In the previous video, we determined that the number average was equal to 17.5 kilograms per mole. As you can see, that's a smaller value than our weight average. And this just demonstrates that within a polymer distribution, your weighted average will always be greater than the number average due to larger chains making a larger contribution to the value. Using the number average and weighted average molecular weight, the polydispersity of the sample can be determined.